Chair. Good evening, everybody. It is 7 o'clock. I'd like to call to order the Planning Commission meeting of Thursday, November 6, 2023. ask you to please stand and join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please put your right hand over your heart and repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Uh, that brings us to a roll call. Um, so. Yeah, Chair Anderson. Here. Vice Chair Elise. Here. Commissioner Lujan. Here. And Commissioner Olivares. Here. Okay, uh, this brings us to public comments. Is anybody here to speak on any items that are not on the agenda, that we don't have agenda items for? We have two speakers. First, we'll go with Marcos Alvarez. Okay. Marcos Alvarez. Hello, Mr. Alvarez. See you, Mr. Good to see you. Mr. Olivares, Mr. Lujan, Mr. Elise, and Ms. Magana. Um, I just got off of work, so let me gather my thoughts real quick. I'm going to speak off the cuff. Um, as you know, I'm also on the Human Rights Committee meeting, and what I want to do, I can only speak for me and hope people will follow. I live in the 93550 area code, um, and I say that to you because there's been studies on the density, the over density with respect to liquor licenses, alcohol licenses, and liquor stores in that area. Um, in a nutshell, uh, Dr. O'Hara from UC Berkeley has made a study for Palmdale throughout the whole area and Palmdale alone. What they have found a co was a correlation between the liquor license, the alcohol license, and crime. Right? I have two teenagers. I live in the 9355 error code. And this isn't the first study. There's been a previous study a few years ago to foul uh, the, on deaf ears. I'm asking this body to really take a look at these studies. Studies that are that were made by Dr. O'Hare from UC Berkeley, a world-known uh, community and college with respect to social justice and any other movement in America that we've had have gone to UC Berkeley, a respected uh, entity, along with uh, Pueblo y Salud, the nonprofit. And both of them, the, the commonality that have is that there is an impact with respect to crime and the uh, overabundance of uh, more liquor stores in the 9355 area code and in the totality of Palmdale alone. So, I'm recommending to this body to take a look at that data and to come back with concrete plans to not just minimize further or even review the current licenses and see how that's working out in the areas where we live. Um, I myself would spend more time creating more jobs that lift the community versus the correlation that we see that I just presented. Uh, I'm all for job infrastructure on all sides of Palmdale. But this right here, over 33 on the east side versus uh, one-third on the west, this, something's got to give. Uh, in the interest of producing better jobs for our communities and our children, uh, I'm asking you to take this uh, data and present it to our city council so th this time around and in the future we can come up with some better results as we continue to build and live in Palmdale. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alvarez. You're welcome. Appreciate your comments. Okay, we have a second person. Eugene Hernandez. Um, just to reiterate what uh, Mr. Uh, Alvarez said, I want you to take a look at 10th Street East and Palmdale Boulevard next to Sam's Liquor Store. I have made the complaint before the city council that there was between 10 and 40 gang members that hang around there. What's the central point why they're hanging around there? Sam's Liquor. And now, at first time I've seen them at night, there's even more. That parking lot is face to face with 
uh, vehicles, they're dealing in drugs, they're gang members, they're a threat to this community. And, and like I said, I don't know if you heard of the broken window theory. When you let a problem like that fester in our community, it spreads around, you know? It lowers the, the uh, uh, incidence, uh, I mean, it heightens the incidence of violence. You open up the Animal Valley Press, what do you see, first of all? People who have died, who have died drunk, you know, crashing into semis, running into trains, etc. What's the central focus? That we have too many liquor stores in the Chicano and black community. And you could stop it. You could stop issuing permits for these liquor stores. You could help reduce crime. You could help reduce violence. You know, domestic violence incurs, occurs mostly in situations of black and brown communities uh, egged on by alcohol use by one of the other partners. You know, those are statistics. Like Mr. Elvis said, Berk, um, that professor from Berkeley has that studies. He, he could arrange for her to come and present it to you guys. And I think that, you know, I want to see the community prosper, not go down. And when I see all these gang members right this minute hanging around Sam's liquor store. Now, Sam doesn't give a damn about the community. He just rakes in the money from these gangsters and allows them to park in his parking lot to deal with the drugs, to intimidate people. Latino businesses from around that area have complained to me that they fear for their lives. They fear for the business because these gang members, you know, likely to break a window, steal from a customer, you know, um, rob a customer, and you're allowing it to do, to do this because you're allowing these liquor stores. These liquor stores should all be hit with ABC to challenge their licenses, you know, uh, there should be uh, more vigilance about what they're doing and what they're getting away with because, like I said, they don't contribute to the community. They just make a, a profit off crime. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez. Appreciate your passion for public safety. Okay. Um, is that the end of our comments? Okay. We'll move on to item number five. Can I get a motion to waive the full reading of all resolutions and ordinances? Motion. Okay, you got a uh, motion from Commissioner Olivares. Uh, a one second. One moment, pardon me. Uh, is it up on your screen? I see the agenda item. And a uh, motion, press motion? Press motion. Yes. Okay. And then a second from Commissioner Lujan. Please show your vote. And you can begin voting here. Is it up on your screen? Not yet. Okay, there it is. There we go. Okay. Okay, let the record show. Motion passes four to zero. Okay, uh, we're on to the consent calendar, which is basically our minutes from the October 12th meeting. Can I get a, a motion to approve the consent calendar? A motion. Motion from Commissioner <coughs> Lujan. Do I have a second? Second. Second from <coughs> Commissioner Oliveras. Uh, please you, show your vote once the computer catches up. Are you able to see that on your screen? Uh, well, okay, so you pushed m motion, right? Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's just a three second delay. Right oh, there. gotcha. Please show your vote. Let the record show. Motion passes four to zero. Now we're on to the public hearings. Item 7A, Assistant Planner Juan Lopez. Good evening, uh, Chair and members of the Planning Commission. The item before you is for conditional use permit 230013 uh, submitted on behalf of the Yukon Group. This is a request for the continued operation of an existing wireless telecommunication facility 
located at the Annal Valley Mall for a period of 10 years. The existing facility was approved under CUP0005 and consisted of a 50 foot high sign structure and a 273 square foot utility building. Uh, no modifications are being proposed as part of this project. The existing facility serves as the entrance sign for the Annal Valley Mall. Um, for ongoing maintenance purposes, the project will continue to access them, uh, ac will take access from Mall Ring Road west of 10th Street West. Additionally, the existing facility has ladders built into the interior of the monument structure to allow access to the antennas for a majority of the maintenance. When significant maintenance is required, the applicant will utilize a boom lift and implement traffic control measures to access antennas. The image shows a facility looking west from the northwest corner of 10th Street West and Rancho Vista Boulevard. Staff recommends that Planning Commission adopt resolution number PC 2023-0025, approving CUP 23-0013, and find that the project is consistent with the previously adopted MND and MMRP. This concludes my presentation. The applicant and I are available for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Do any of the commissioners have any technical questions for staff at this time? Okay, thank you. Um, do we have anybody here to speak on the item? Anybody online? No? Okay. Um, do the commissioners have any, well, there's nobody to ask questions to. Questions for staff or, no? I mean, really, this is, this is like a beautiful example of what we really want cell towers to look like. You can't get any stealthier than that sign. <laughs> nobody in the world would know that that's a cell tower. So, um, anyways, okay, then can I get a motion to um, approve item 7A? I got a motion from Commissioner, was that Elise or Lujan? Elise. 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 And a second from Commissioner Lujan. Uh, please show your vote. Once the computer's, oh, look at that, it's going fast. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Okay, let the record show that item passes with four yes votes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lopez. Now we're on to item 7B. Assistant Planner Sarah Stacknick. Thank you. <laughs> this is the foster care village? Yes, sir. Okay. Good evening, planning commissioners. Um, before you tonight, next slide, please. Um, before you tonight is a request from SOS Children's Villages for the approval of a mixed-use development for foster youth housing and related services. In July 2022, uh, City Council approved a housing authority loan, uh, loan for the acquisition and pre-development of the property. The project will include the construction of seven two-unit residential buildings and one mixed-use building which will include residential, community, and office uses. As shown here, the project is located on 30th Street East between Palmdale Boulevard and Avenue R, and the site is located within the mixed use one zone. The project site is divided into two sections. The mixed use building located along 30th Street East, shown here to the right of the screen, will include offices, a community center, and six studio apartments. In addition, there will be an outdoor uh, event area, including a landscape plaza along 30th Street East, as well as a picnic area and outdoor event area. The residential portion will be located within the western portion of the site and will include seven two-unit buildings situated around a central courtyard. The site will also include a garden, picnic and outdoor event areas, and several play areas for multiple age ranges. The project will be phased. Phase one will include the construction of six townhouse buildings the community center, offices, and two studio apartments. And phase two will include the construction of one additional townhouse building and four studio apartments. The proposed design will include various building materials and textures to provide visual interest as shown here. Um, in addition, the design includes earth tones which are compatible with the desert environment 
and includes opportunities for painted murals. Furthermore, several architectural enhancements will be included, including entrance courtyards clearly denoting the building entrances, as well as varying roof lines and building projections. Um, for the desired design to be feasible, a few deviations to municipal code are requested, which are outlined within the plan development document. These deviations are as follows. Um, an increase in the residential and non-residential ground floor maximum setback from 25 and 15 feet to 45 and 25 feet respectively. This increase in the allowable setbacks will allow for the proposed mixed-use building orientation, as well as for the landscaped area along 30th Street East. Second, a reduction in the minimum ground floor height of non-residential development from 15 to 12 feet. Third, a decrease in the required space between buildings from 30 to 8 feet. This is required to allow the desired orientation of the buildings around a central courtyard. And lastly, the project requests a decrease in the parking area for the community assembly use, from one space for every 40 square feet to one space for every 200 square feet, to allow for a parking standard that is more appropriate for the anticipated parking demand of this site. And with that, staff is recommending that the Planning Commission adopt the resolution recommending City Council approval of Plan Development 23-001, approving Site Plan Review 23-003, and find that the project is categorically exempt from environmental review. That concludes my presentation. The applicants and I are available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Stacknick. Do any of the commissioners have any technical questions for staff at this time? You have a, I have a, I have a question. Um, is the applicant here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Come on, come on. Well, there's, there's going to be uh, time to talk to the applicant, but this is, this is staff. Oh, okay. staff. Okay. Technical questions to staff. Okay. Okay, all right. If there are no further technical questions, oh, technical question for for the parking, would that would that would you propose would that uh, be sufficient parking for for the expected demand? Yes, um, the uh, community center is anticipated to mainly serve the um, the community that's on site, and so they're you know anticipating to have a couple um, a couple events a month that are, you know, are not anticipated to generate a, a great uh, parking demand and will be able to use the parking that's available on site. Okay, yeah, I was just thinking if, if, th if that wasn't enough parking, I would have thought that they would have been using the park's parking or something like that, you know? Yeah, um, based on uh, the events that are anticipated, it, it seems like that the 20 spaces that are provided specifically for the community center use will be um, sufficient. And then the distance between the buildings for the reduction to eight feet. Um, any any challenges with that, or any perceived issues with that? Um, no. So the um, this project has been before the fire department. Um, you know, it meets building and um, fire code. Um, the multifamily mixed use design standards have the thirty feet distance requirement. However, our own municipal code has actually a six foot distance requirement so it still meets that requirement um, and it still has you know follows the intention of the multifamily design standards because it allows passageways throughout the buildings um, so it, it meets all um, just wanted to make sure that that fell within that standard since especially since we foster kids and things like that yeah absolutely thank you. thank you okay are there any more technical questions before we open the public hearing Okay, if no other technical questions, then I will open the public hearing. Um, and if there's an uh, applicant or speakers who would like to speak on this, come on up. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, my name is Tim McCormick, and uh, the executive director for SOS Children's Villages California. And, <clears throat> I mean, I do want to hear your questions, but I, I also want to congratulate you and the city. Uh, early on, the city of Palmdale said we could make a difference in foster care. Uh, this is a model that has worked in Illinois and in Florida. And, and the model does four really important things. It uh, keeps brothers and sisters together in foster care. Uh, LA County has the highest amount of children in foster care. This is one of the higher impact areas. 75% of children who enter foster care are separated. And there's another level of trauma. And so we build the houses so that the children can be together as a sibling group. The second component is a full-time parent. I was sharing earlier 
uh, we go out into the community and find people of goodwill through faith-based communities and all sorts of ways to say, come uproot your life and live in this community. And we'll provide this housing and we'll provide a car. And that's why the issues with the car and that is, is because you've got six kids, you're, you, know, you need a car to carry those six kids around. And provide unconditional love and support and we'll train you to work with, at many times, the fragmented parts of the DCFS system to make sure different outcomes. In, in Illinois, where I've been doing this for 18 years, I'm now happy to do it here. We've had 100% high school graduation rates. We can actually make sure that children leave the system in a much safer and stable way when they're all under one roof, one umbrella. And, and so that's an important part. And then there's an intentional community within a neighborhood. So we don't want to isolate the children who are from this community because we'll be placing children that they can stay in their school districts and, and, and be here. And they form a community of strength within a greater neighborhood. And that kind of intentional community of support, both for the foster parents and the children and the birth parents, is really transformative to make that happen. And then there's single individual homes. So it's not a group home. It's a particular home that looks like all of our homes with different things on the refrigerators and, and activities. So this has been a long journey here in California to, to get to this place. But uh, the, the city of Palmdale, uh, the supervisor, uh, have really stepped up and said, we, we want to create the change that has happened in other places and make it start here in Palmdale. So I'll stop there. And so this questions. is the first um, project of its kind in, in California? In California. Wow. Yeah. It, it, it seems like it shouldn't be. Like, why is it so ground shattering to keep brothers and sisters together? <clears throat> but it is. So you've got room, you'll have room for 14 families. Yes, so eventually, yes. We'll start off with 12 and then, yeah, and move okay. from there. So they do be recruiting these families, correct? Will they, um, and they're in the local area, so they will have to move into the uh, uh, the apartments. Yeah. So you know, the the way we've looked at this is, we we look for people from the local community and, and so on, and we ask someone not to do this as a job, but has to do it as a vocation, and we'll provide those resources. So you can, and we ask for three years commitment. Mm -hmm. So if you think of it almost like the Peace Corps, and say, come in here provide this unconditional love, you'll see children's lives change and your life will be changed by it. Okay. Um, let me see now, you said that there is going to be uh, foster youth and allow siblings to stay together. Um, <clears throat> now, what are the ages? Are we talking from? Um, from two days old from the hospital because oftentimes the other siblings in our care to 21. 21. Now, after, I know after um, 17, I know there's... Uh, they will be considered non-minor dependent, so would they be uh, considered this, this part as, as a tr transitional housing? Well, in, in California, you can stay in out-of-home care or foster care until you're 21. Mm -hmm. and, um, and actually, here in California, uh, you can leave foster care and say, hey, maybe this is not going so well, mm -hmm. and come back and get benefits. Okay. Um, so it really depends, but we do have in, in the plan those kind of studio apartments where uh, younger adults can begin to transition out and, and maybe not live with five other kids. Now, will you be <clears throat> contracted with um, L.A. County? The uh, DCFS of L.A. County will be through the children. County. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, for, I apologize. <laughs> I'm the same way here. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I know your, your contract's going to have specific guidelines, and someone that's going to be 17, 18, all the way to 21 years old. Uh, would you have anything in regards to job placement or job assistance, educational, anything like that? Yes, yeah, so we, we, we will implement a kind of a workforce employment opportunities. The, the goal here is not just to feed and house kids. It is to educate. And the village also then attracts other people for opportunities to find the jobs and, and to make that happen. Okay. Um, uh, both for the, 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 uh, the children in our care and their parents. Okay. Um, have you gotten together with any uh, members of our community and to see what their um, they take is on this particular? We, we initially talked, you know, to some of the churches, Victory Outreach, other, you know, people kind of just at the initial stages. We're, we have a kind of a shared office now with Sycamore here in Palmdale, and we're hiring a community resource person. Okay. And now will these, uh, <coughs> these, uh, for these foster youth, 
Will they have social workers? Yes. Yeah. So the, 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 the services provided there will be the social workers on site, clinical therapy to deal with the issues of trauma, mm. and then education uh, coordination, because education suffers oftentimes. Uh, children in the United States in foster care move twice a year. Okay. So they're disrupted in their school. Mm. And so we focus a lot on, on education. Okay. Uh, and, and the foster kids, you said they're going to be um, members of our community and they will still be going to the same schools. We want to keep them, the nucleus that, family that's together. The that's the goal. That's the goal. Okay. Yeah. I don't have any more questions. So our, I know we're, we're only here looking at your site plan review. <laughs> we just, we, you just have nosy planning commissioners here and we like to ask a lot of questions. Um, but uh, uh, you're saying this is the first project. Do you think there might be more in Palmdale? Well, we're, 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 um, the hardest part of this job is getting the parents. Oh. Right? All right. So you get this up and running. And, see and then we're talking, yeah. All right. And it's very capital intensive. So to, to, to get the, the, the really need is there. The need is village. there. And I think once you show proof of concept, it's a lot easier for the second village. Oh, hey, I, any questions on the site plan review? I have one more question I wanted to ask you. Um, you said you guys are going to have a community center. You don't, do you anticipate how many events you're going to be having a year? Or is it just I was hoping you said, could you be a foster parent, man? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I was a foster parent. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so that 7,000 square foot community center is built for the community. If it was just built for these smaller kids, it'd be much smaller. So <clears throat> this becomes a, a center point for the community to learn, explore, and other at-risk youth to be there to feel safe. That's nice, you're a foster parent. Yeah. We appreciate that. The most noble job there is in the world. I mean, we ask the off-topic questions because the community asks us. Yeah. You know, we approve what is just a site plan review, and then later on people say, hey, tell me about that project. So we ask a few extra questions. That no, I'm, 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 I, I appreciate, we appreciate we everything appreciate. this community has done for this project. So asking the question is good, too. Any questions about the project? I have a question. Um, you, you talked about this, this being concept in Illinois and other places and stuff. What's your success rate out there? And as far as the village itself and so, site So <laughs> 48% of kids in foster care never graduate high school. I had 16 years of 100% high school graduation rate. Wow. 98% of the kids go to 98% of the classes. And so <coughs> here's, the, here's the secret sauce of this. When you have this full-time parent who supported, different things happen. And, and so we have a logic model of 22 things that we look at in terms of stability, safety, placements, things like that. Again, when you invest the beginning of the story, you have different outcomes at the end. So yeah, that's a good question. Appreciate it. On the, um, I noticed on the on the pictures of the site plan or whatever, there were green areas which we assume is grass, mm -hmm. right? And then there were gray areas, what, uh, like looks like maybe asphalt. Um, what what is that like? We'll get Gil up here in a minute, our architect. But there go to it. It's again, this will be common area that anyone can come into. It's going to be approach. What do you want to go back to it for a second? That might be helpful. Uh, site plan and then proposed site plan. AC Martin, uh, architects, is our partners here. In Idaho. Hello, yeah. Robert Runka, Principal of AC Martin. Oh, great. Happy to answer any questions. Um, yeah, just, that's going to be like, uh, what, um, tennis do, courts and yeah, uh, the, the, picnic so, well, tables? Pickleball. Pickle pickle very, very popular right now. Uh, um, in, in terms of the, uh, the landscape and the hardscape, well, uh, something to keep in mind is all the landscape is really regional drought tolerant, which is important, right, uh, uh, to be water conservative. Um, the hardscape, you'll notice that there's a, clearly a road that kind of, it's really a fire road and, a, and a, an, an emergency access road as well as uh, access for parking. That's simply going to be your standard asphalt, right, as, as well as the parking. Beyond that, the hardscape is going to be a variety of pavers and a variety of, uh, of uh, concrete and concrete finishes, right? So, so where people kind of play and walk. Right, right. Uh, so uh, pedestrian walkways, and then there's a couple of like three large kind of open areas yeah. there. Yeah, there's like pods for gathering. That's right. Okay. And, and, and in those things will be uh, 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 covered trellises with lighting, a little bit of lighting for oh, the evenings. Oh, in the gray, in the gray, yeah. the, the, that's the three exactly big right. in the middle of the village there. There's that, that's exactly right. There's going to be uh, um, there's a small orchard area where uh, a, citrus, right. with some, exactly. a few citrus trees 
there's also going to be uh, planter beds, so uh, oh, parents and the kids can get. It's not that's, just that's not just asphalted in. That's snow exactly gray right. Areas. I think about like the commons. That, okay, that's right. Yeah, so, it's, it's, so it's a really a rich variety of outdoor, of outdoor spaces. There's uh, uh, w w even the wa the way the water is treated. The rainwater it gets filtered and treated. Uh, there will be what looks like a dry river bed running through the site as well. So it'll be really quite oh, wow. charming. And the the it's organized in such a way that of those three kind of uh, pods you were talking about, the middle one is the most common one. There'll be some barbecues out there, some uh, uh, outdoor picnic tables, like we said, some covered trellises. While the one on the left is geared towards younger kids, some of the smaller kids, right? Uh, so we'll have uh, uh, age-appropriate uh, uh, toys. Playground uh, areas. Playground yeah. areas, thank you. Pot pots. While the one on the right will be geared towards uh, more of the teenagers. So oh. someone can cruise around on their skateboard while someone else is uh, playing on a teeter-totter and be safe. Oh, great. Cool. Playground. Nice. I know uh, in, in Palmdale, you know, it, it does get hot around here. It does. And, and, um, so you guys are going to use what uh, uh, have you considered a drip irrigation system um, within the um, within the village? Uh, that, that, that's exactly right. So the so the so so it'll be a, we're, we start off with the with the with the specific plants. We want to use things that use very very little water, and then and then yes, it'll be a drip type uh, irrigation system uh, throughout. And uh, and and because of the, um, the, the the concern about some of the heat, um, we do have those covered outdoor areas uh, that we talked about. Those cover outdoor areas are both within the, the bigger open space, but then each one of the uh, townhomes also has its own uh, a courtyard, which has outdoor covered space as well. So you can take advantage of uh, you know, a nice day and be out in the shade and, and uh, uh, enjoy the weather. Great. Great. Very place. nice. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Appreciate Thank you. all the Thank extra you. information. All right. Is there Thank anybody you. else here to speak on this item? Ask questions or whatever? Okay. Uh, if I have no objections, I will close the public hearing on this item and ask for a motion from the Madam Mayor. Uh, Madam Mayor, not equity in Southern Falls. Do we have a. Uh, is this 7.8? Oh, 7.8. You mean 7B? Yeah. Is it for 7B? Uh, I think so. There's one 7B. Yeah. 7B? Okay. We have one speaker. Okay. I reopen the public hearing and. And Mr. Hernandez, come on up and. Yes, uh, I fully, su fully support Tim and this project. I think that it's a, a marvelous project, very well thought out. I appreciate Jethro's questions. They're very thorough. And I think that uh, something like this will really help our community. Because unfortunately, as you know, the every single day we hear of a death. I, I've been a DCFS worker for 18 years, retired. You hear about the death of kids, you know. Two, two kids in Lancaster were stabbed to death by their father and two more wounded. The other day we had another two-year-old who, who was killed and were famous for children's death under the supervision of DCFS, like Anthony Avalos, I don't know if you guys heard of him, and other kids. So something like this will help improve the foster care system, the parents, and the children. And uh, I fully support this effort. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, no other speakers? Okay, if there's no objections, we'll close the public hearing on this item and ask for either discussion or a motion from commissioners. And our screen side. Oh, there they are. <laughs> They're back. They're back. They're back. Okay, there we go. Okay, um, discussion or a motion? Would somebody like to make a motion? Motion. motion. Okay, so I had a motion from Commissioner Oliveras and a second from Commissioner Lujan. Second from Commissioner Oh, did we get that? Okay, then we'll do a second from uh, Commissioner Elise, or Elise. Vice Chair, Vice Chair Elise. Do we have a second? Okay. Motion. They all motioned. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so motion from Luhan and second from Vice Chair Ilis. Okay, show your vote.
let the record show. Motion passes with four yes votes. Thank you very much. We're looking, uh, we're looking forward to seeing that village. How long do you think it'll take the village to be up and going? We hope to uh, first quarter of next year. Kind of, we got to get some permits, but uh, once we you know begin that, we'll be twelve months to construct. Twelve, fourteen months. To construct. Great. Okay. Thank, Thank you very you much. Thank you for your time. And then you'll have a big ribbon cutting, right? Yeah, well, sweet. You're all there. <laughs> Okay, thank you. You have a good night. Okay, we're on to item 7C with planning manager, Miss Magadia. Good evening, commissioners. The item before you tonight is Zoning Ordinance Amendment 23-0003. To give a little background, as you're all aware, we went through the general plan update that was adopted in September of 2022 by the City Council. Following that, we had a comprehensive zoning ordinance amendment to update all of Title 17 in March of 2023. Since then, we've had follow-up cleanup items adopted by the City Council in August of 2023. The items before you are here to clarify measurement requirements between fueling stations, making sure that we include the distance requirement will be measured from the edge of the nearest fueling pump to the next fueling pump. We're gonna clarify the definition of drive-through services and restaurant facility by making sure that we uh, make sure that the distance separation requirements will be measured from menu board to menu board. And we're also going to clarify the distance requirements between alcohol beverage establishments within the public facilities civic zone. So currently, the way that our zoning ordinance reads is that you measure from lot line to lot line. So the reason for clarifying these definitions is to make sure that we're still being business friendly and developer friendly uh, when it comes to these planned developments because it would mean that the developer would have to get their maps recorded prior to their development, therefore delaying any um, projects that are in the pipeline. We are also looking to modify the allowable uses within the permissions table for the mix mixed use zone. So within this, we have updated that CUPs will be required for restaurant drive through establishments with a pickup order window with an order ahead type business models. So the mixed use zone is, as you all know, uh, for pedestrian oriented development. So we still want it to be developer friendly while allowing options for a pickup window versus ordering at the window. We've also added the option for food and beverage manufacturing. So essentially we have um, businesses, local businesses with restaurants in the area, multiple restaurants. This would allow for them to have one location where they have kind of like a commissary and then they go ahead and distribute from there. Next, we're gonna be allowing the permissions table for the public facilities and open space zones. So as you, uh, as you have seen, we have quite a few wireless facilities within the utility zone. And um, although it is allowed, it's not clearly defined that it's allowed. So we wanted to make sure that we included that in our use table so that there is no question about whether it was allowed or not. Lastly, we wanted to clarify the development standards for industrial zones. There was a discrepancy in a depth or section which had 50% for open space requirements. So to make it consistent, we and it said 40% in the other, so we wanted to be developer friendly and went with 40%. In summary, staff recommends that you adopt resolution number PC 2023-027, recommending city council approval of zoning ordinance amendment 23-0003, and find the project is consistent with the program environmental impact report 22-002, prepared and certified in conjunction with the city's general plan Palmdale 2045. I'm available if you have any questions. Thank you, Ms. Magana. Uh, do any of the commissioners have any technical questions for staff at this time? I do have one question. Um, in regards to the, um, <clears throat> the, uh, the drive-through, you know, what are we talking about? You said from window to window. Um, so, that's, so that's the drive-through window, or are you talking about this, the restaurant itself? So it'll be measured from menu board to menu board. Um, 
the topic of drive through restaurants came up with our zoning ordinance amendment because we do have a 500 uh, foot minimum distance requirement. Mm -hmm. um, however, as I mentioned, in order to be developer friendly, a lot of these projects come as a comprehensive development with multiple parcels where they need to record a map in order to do so and currently we measure from property line to property line making that delaying the development process so this will help be more flexible with development okay so if someone has a hmm, how do i phrase this um Any other technical questions from the commissioners before we open the public hearing? One question. So in regards about the, uh, the liquor um, parameters for, for letter schools, do you know how long, how far it is requirements they require right now from schools, a liquor store to, to a school? Or I was concerned about the, uh, the um, this new project. Uh, there is a liquor store at the corner of R and 30th Street, and this new place is gonna take they're going to build, it's not far from, from there. That's the only concern I was having. You know what I'm talking about? I'm was that, not sure. I don't know that that was the, in the scope the, of yeah. what she was So right. the alcohol, how far do you, do you have to, for, uh, for uh, alcohol. alcohol, for liquor? So we have different distance requirements depending on the type of use that you have. So bona fide restaurants are typically exempt from those. Okay. Um, but for example, for nightclubs or bars or convenience stores, those all have different dis distance separation requirements. Okay. okay. So that's in the, in the industrial manufacturing, food and beverage manufacturing, that's not necessarily liquor related? No. It? So then that would come separately as an ABC uh, ask. Um, okay, Any, if there's no other technical questions, we'll open the public hearing on this item. Do we have an applicant or anybody here to speak on it? We are the applicant. We are? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you have a different staff member that talks about it. I don't know. Okay, um, if we have nobody to speak on, I'll close the public hearing and ask the commissioners for either a motion or further discussion. Holy cow. Uh-oh. Technical difficulties. Reboot. Oh, we're back. Okay. Uh, further discussion or a motion? Somebody would like to make a motion, perhaps? I have a motion from Commissioner, I'm sorry, Vice Chair Elise, and a second from Commissioner Lujan. Please show your vote. Let the record show motion passes 4-0. Thank you, Ms. McGonigan. We'll move on to item 7D with contract planner Liz Golden. So I'll go ahead and be <laughs> presenting on behalf of Liz Golden. Uh, the item before you is an item that you've seen before. The project is a request for the continued operation of an existing wireless facility located at 906 East Avenue R. You saw this item on October, September 14th, sorry, September 14th, and at the time the applicant requested a continuance to get some clarification regarding one of the conditions. Since then, that issue has been resolved, and uh, staff recommends approval of resolution number PC 2023-21, approving CUP 23-010, and find that the project is consistent with the previously approved mitigated negative declaration. Okay, thank you, Ms. Begonia. Uh, do any of the commissioners have any technical questions on uh, for staff on this item? Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. You were so gracious to allow me to. <laughs> <laughs> you got a haircut oh. there. <laughs> yeah, I did get a haircut. And, and by the way, I've been traveling and I forgot I, my boots were working on this. <laughs> the resolution of the contract. 
Our resolution, resolution was to. What was the resolution? We will be keeping the condition as is. Okay. The condition was really for the us developing that. Yeah. yeah. Future, future stealthy. Okay, if there's no other technical questions, we'll open the public hearing. If an uh, applicant would like to come up and... Jim Jaggers, I'm half the applicant. I'm here if you have any questions for me. Okay. And so you've met with staff, and yes. you guys have um, come to a meeting of the minds? Correct. Okay. All righty. Um, any questions from the commissioners? All right. And I, if nobody else here would like to speak on the item, I'll close the public hearing. I'll let you do your job. And uh, ask for either discussion or a motion. No discussion? All right. So uh, please uh, make a motion. All right. Motion from Vice Chair Elise. Second from Commissioner Lujan. Uh, please show your votes. Let the record show, motion passes with four yes votes. Um, thank you very much, sir, for coming back. And um, I guess we'll go on to item number eight, staff communications. So you'll notice that we're down a person tonight. Commissioner Martinez has resigned and we have uh, began rec recruitment for his seat. As soon as we have gone through the application, city clerk is handling all that. We will get that on the city council agenda and get a new person appointed. In the meantime, we can appoint a new person to the arts commission. Um, we can, we don't have to wait to fill his seat to do so. So we can um, work through that and when we wanna go ahead and do that. All right, so everybody um, consider if that's something you'd like to do potentially and then we put it on the future agenda. Okay. And, and it said that they met was it once a month or beginning of, like once one Wednesday or third or Tuesday or Wednesday. Month, month? I can get the specifics for you, uh, and then we can go ahead and do, I can let you know we go from there. It's once a month at like five thirty, on like a Tuesday or Wednesday. I I appear by Zoom for them. <laughs> so I, just, I know they have it once a month at kind of like an early time. I think it's five thirty. Um, no, it, it, it's all via Zoom. Um, no, there, I just, I just don't drive out here for it, okay. um, because it, it's just, they just talk about art, it's actually pretty, if, if you like art, I would encourage you to join it, um, but usually the, whoever the pub, the public art person is, gives a bunch of presentations about what they're working on, and then they make decisions on just art that they want to put in the city, it's, it's kind of, as far as public meetings go, it's interesting, I, I mean, at least it's fun, and no one's usually, yelling at you or anything. <laughs> it's all about making everything better and pretty. So I mean, if anyone's interested in that, I would recommend it. And if you can make the, make the time. And they still need um, city attorney representation at those meetings. Yeah, no one's asked me a question um, so <laughs> far, but yeah, I do okay. um, pop it on Zoom. And then there's one time it lasted a really, really long time, like two hours, but most of the, the other an hour or less, so just in case you're thinking about how to budget your time. I just thought I'd be helpful because I've sat in those meetings. Well, thank you very much. Okay, uh, if we're done with staff communication, we'll go to planning commissioner communications. Anybody have anything you want to chat about? No? Okay, then I guess we are adjourned to the next meeting of Thursday, November 9th at 7 p.m. Oh, I'm sorry. That was today. Whoops. <laughs> December 6th at 7 p.m. <laughs> <laughs>